Sophie. So it's that time again, um, end of another month. Um, we're going to start with some fiction. Um, I've read fairly little fiction this month, um, so I'm going to chuck in my poetry and graphic novels in there as well for you. And the first one I'm going to show you is I Am Executioner by Rajesh Parameshwaran. Um, this is a collection of short stories. They are all vaguely sort of connected um, to India. Um, and I actually really enjoyed this one. I would say that it's probably sort of a middling short story collection. It didn't completely blow me away, but I think an awful lot of the stories I actually really did enjoy. Um, they're really different. It was quite a sort of, uh, I don't know, quite, quite a lot of good variety in them, I suppose. So we had one story where we have um, it set in the future on another planet, which is inhabited by these insectoids and how they're relating to humans and about the dynamics of the relationships between these two different cultures um, and how the sort of insect uh, alien race thinks that humans are sort of just trying to study them and that they don't really get their culture um, and then we've got um, a story told by an elephant and by a man who sort of falls in love with this elephant. Um, we have a story of a tiger who falls in love with a zookeeper. Um, what else do we have? We have a story about a society in which individuals are employed as agents who follow around certain individuals through their life, through every section of their life, and they have like a time period through which they have to follow them. Um, and sort of everyone knows that these agents exist and no one really knows who's watching who. Um, yeah, I, I gave this one three out of five stars, but I think probably it should be a four. Um, there are a couple of stories in there I thought were just a bit long-winded and boring, even though I thought that the way of telling them was quite interesting. Um, but I wasn't expecting to like this as much as I did. And then the next one I have is As a Dark by Comet McCarthy. Um, this one is, as I spoke about in my haul, about a young woman um, who ends up having a child with her brother um, and her brother takes his child into the middle of the woods and leaves it to die um, and she doesn't think that it's really dead so goes on a sort of quest to find the child um, and the brother ends up going on this quest to find his sister. Um, this is probably my least favourite of the McCarthy's I've read so far um, but I still think it's a good story. Um, it's really sort of centering on the difference of experience between this woman and this man and the way that they're treated as they go through this journey of trying to seek, um, I suppose. And it's sort of this long sort of parable almost about good and bad and whether or not your previous bad behaviours follow you in any sense. Um, but I just didn't find it as automatically enga as engaging as I have done with his other work. So, if that sounds of interest to you, then maybe still do pick it up, but I think he's written better things. And then next we have The Crow Girl by Eric Axelson. Uh, I've done a full review of this one on my channel already, which I'll link above for you, but I'm not going to go into it again here. And then the last fiction, I know, four, four fictional stuff the whole month, um, is Caesarean by Thomas Vigera. Tommy Vigera. Um, and this one is the story of a young man who is sort of growing up in East Anglia in this hilltop home that is quite literally falling into the sea with his mother. And as he grows up, he finds out some things about his mother and his father that he didn't really know before and decides to sort of delve deeper into their history and their relationship previously. His father's estranged, so that's sort of this huge mystery running through it. Um, and he discovers, and it's on the back, so no spoilers, but he discovers that his mother was a porn star and she was very famous and everyone sort of knows who she is if they watch that genre of, of porn films. Um, but he's been sort of oblivious to this. Really, this is a coming of age story. Um, it's told sort of across the world. Um, when I was reading it, it, to me, it sort of reminded me of that international kid experience that a lot of my sort of friends at school had had where by dint of their parents moving around the world, they sort of explored and were part of all of these different kinds of cultures. And it kind of had that mixed in. I found it really odd to see the UK viewed in that way. So there were some things that um, were obviously like foreigners' views of the UK. Um, so like as an example, there's a time when the main character is sitting down to have a cup of tea with a lady and she asks him if he'd like to take tea in the English way with milk. And I can't see that anyone <laughs> who has been in England the whole life would ever ask if someone wanted tea the English way, you just make them tea. Um, so yeah, there were odd little things like that. Um, I gave some four out of five stars in the end. I think what I really enjoyed about it was the way that the author has of sort of pinning down personality traits and um, 
sort of descriptions of characters in quite a concise manner, and I really enjoyed that. Um, there were some turns of phrases in here that I think were really nice as well. I don't know whether I give the props to the translator or to Tommy, Tommy McGurry himself, um, but there were, there were some nice sort of sentences in there as well. Um, I think even though I rated this quite highly, I don't think it's affected me all that much. I think it's probably one that's going to drop down to three in time. And then we've got one poetry collection, and that is Pretty to Breeze by C. Jones. I really enjoyed this one. I did a review just raving about it, which I'll link for you um, if you want to go check that one out. And then the very last one I want to show you in this section is The Arrival by Sean Tan. This is a graphic novel um, that is absolutely beautiful. I've shown you guys it before, um, but it really is absolutely gorgeous. There's an almost sort of photographic quality to some of the, the drawings in here, which I really liked. Um, and it's essentially the story of an immigrant who arrives in this strange land um, where he recognises none of the food, none of the writing, none of the customs, and he's trying to build his life there so that he can provide for his family back home, um, who are sort of in a place of conflict. Um, I read this in one sitting and just sat down with a coffee um, and just went the whole way through it. And I absolutely loved it as well. I'm definitely going to be picking up again and reading through again. I think it's really touching. I think it's really universal. And yeah, I just thought it was a brilliant reading experience. I know this has already gone around but you a fair amount and that most people have already heard of it. But if this is the first time you're hearing of it, then just read up on it. I think a lot of people will like this one. So that was my ever so brief fiction side of things. Uh, a little bit non-fiction heavy this month. Um, so I'll see you in the second half for that side. All right. Hopefully you're well and I'll see you soon. Bye bye. I'm going to listen to General Theory of Oblivion by Jose Eduardo Agalusa. Um, I sort of front out some of my books and since buying this one, this has stayed front out and almost none of the others have. 